Most backend engineers might have run into it. You're trying to spin up a new HTTP2 server and all of a sudden, the server requires a TLS certificate and a private key. It was like, where did that come from? I just want it for local host. I want to run it on port 80. I cannot do that. So yeah, the answer is you cannot. And there is a very good reason and involves the whole World Wide Web, the internet. And uh, it's called protocol ossification. How about we discuss it? What is this thing? Let's just jump into it. What is going on, guys? My name is Hussein, and in this channel, I discuss all sorts of backend engineering. So if you're interesting, subscribe, like this video, and uh, check out the other videos. How about we jump into it? So HTTP2 is a very interesting case, right? There are a lot of limitations that happen in HTTP 1.0 and then version 1.1, and we tried to solve it in HTTP 2. And I talked about all of that stuff, check all of these HTTP 2 playlists where I discuss the differences. However, when we tried to make these changes, we had to upgrade the HTTP protocol, we had to introduce new headers, we had to kind of uproot the whole thing and we introduced brand new things that didn't exist in http1 like streams right we cannot we no longer send raw tcp packets with the http headers and, and stuff we packet them in the streams and the streams has its own headers and that's all nice and we were very excited and uh, here's what happened when we people tried to enable http2 on unsecure connection on port 80 and here's what happened it didn't work. All of a sudden, we will run it and the browser starts consuming it, right? Start consuming this protocol and packets will be dropped. All of a sudden you get some weird results. Like why is that? And the reason is because the internet is involved with so many other boxes. There are so many other routers and, and NAT devices in the internet. And those routers have been designed in the 80s and, and the 70s and even 90s. And those, there is a problem with those devices. They try to be too clever by half. And when they do that, they say, okay, you're trying to communicate on port 80. Let me check this packet. Port 80 is HTTP. So what they do is they over-validate those packets. It says, okay, HTTP on port 80 is supposed to look like this. There should be this packet. There should be this header. They should start with this uh, string, right? HTTP 1.1 and, and version and all that stuff. And if that validation failed, those firewalls, those routers, those boxes in the internet, just decide to drop that packet, think it, it's bad. And guess what? HTTP 2 to those routers is a bad protocol because it doesn't comply with the old protocols because we broke compatibility, obviously, right? With when with with regards to the underlining protocol. Yeah, we didn't broke compatibility compatibility at the blah, we didn't broke compatibility at the application layer. Still the application still you send the same get request and post request, but the transfer protocol is a completely different thing. So those routers start blocking that stuff. And that's because of protocol ossification. And uh, the word ossification is very interesting. It took me a while to understand what it means. Ossification here is the hardening of the protocol and inflexibility that happens on the internet, right? Because the port HTTP 1.1 is well known, right? So although those routers and all those firewalls started to validate those protocol, and if something else comes, they block it. So they are very ossified. They are very hardened. And that's a problem. So the same problem happens with TLS 1.3. When we try to move TLS 1.3 from TLS 1.2, and I discovered this by accident, actually. When we try to move to TLS 1.3, the same thing happened, right? Because the client hello, the first client hello is unencrypted, just like port 80 HTTP is unencrypted, right? The routers and firewalls start to validate those sort of headers. It's like, oh, TLS? Or TLS has to be 1.2 or 1.1 or 1.0, right? There is nothing else. So it starts validating that and, and fails if, if anything else 
exist on those hitters and uh, we'll drop the packet. When will TLS 1.3 came in, we had the same problem. People started, people, pa uh, routers and firewalls started dropping TLS 1.3 client hello, like there's no tomorrow. That's why when I did the sh Wireshark video over here, Wiresharking TLS, I was like, oh, wait a second, I'm doing what TLS 1.3, why does the packet client hello says I am TLS 1.2? That's why. So we, we had to do hacks in the TLS client hello. We have to, tr to pretend that this is TLS 1.2, right? And create another header for TLS 1.3, all right? And that we started to do the same thing here. For HTTP 2, we solved this problem by encrypting everything. We couldn't do this with TLS 1.3 because what do we encrypt? The whole thing is... is we are about to establish an encryption. We cannot encrypt the encrypted client hello, right? I mean, DOH and DOT can actually be nice there. It might help us there, but I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not very sure about that. So yeah, so that is the short story of why HTTP 2 has to be encrypted. And in the future, HTTP 3, same story. We have to encrypt it. Why? Because if you encrypt stuff that the clients, the routers, the firewalls will not dare to look at it because it's encrypted, right? So it will allow it. And it's good. It's a plus for us. Security is good, right? 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 I think so. Yeah, security is great. So you need to secure stuff. You need to encrypt stuff. And, and, and it's great. Why do why not have a security and encrypted stuff? So that's why that's the short story for why HTTP2 is always encrypted and same thing will happen with db3 right and the ietf the internet engineering task force are trying to solve this problem to prevent future protocol ossification right with let's say http2 now becomes great how do you prevent it in the future so they do this uh, i think called grease and i'm gonna put it here i forgot what it stands for but they generate random values in the headers for every protocol and you have to generate those random headers and values and just send them in the packet right so that the uh, uh the routers and and the vendors that implement those firewalls don't try to be so smart and 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 uh ossify the protocol and, and try to validate those headers right and you might say hussein why big deal upgrade upgrade those headers up, upgrade those routers upgrade those firewalls to the latest version to support this stuff it's not easy those boxes are i don't know somewhere in the atlantic ocean i don't know really where they are i'm just making shit up <laughs> but yeah it's very very hard to take those boxes out and upgrade them because if the, if the something is working you don't want to touch it man because uh, you get scared right it's working. We have no idea if we took it out, what services might go down. I don't know, some government GPS service might go down. That probably make something made up, but. All right, guys, very short video to talk about why do we need to encrypt HTTP2? What is protocol ossification and all that jazz? And uh, do you have an example of when, when uh, protocol ossification came into the picture and broke everything, right? The same thing happens when organizations, like if you use an old service, you're, you're, yeah, it's you in your organization, but you run into the same problem. You're very ossified. You just hardened. You cannot move because all these services exist. And when you introduce a new thing, it's very hard, expensive to take out the old thing, right? It's an interesting topic. All right, guys, that's it for me today. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.